In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Android Studio for Jetpack Compose. So that means installing, downloading, and installing the preview version of Android Studio, Android Studio 4.2 Canary, so that we can use Jetpack Compose. You are going to want to visit the URL developer.android.com, Jetpack, and then Compose, and then Setup. So this, will, this is the guide that I'm basically gonna be following in this video. It shows you everything you need to know to get started with Jetpack Compose. The first step here, as you can see with this big kind of blue button, is you need to get Android Studio Canary. So if we click on this big blue button, it takes us to a preview release page where we can choose from the beta build or we can choose from the Canary build, which is the bleeding edge features in a lightly tested build. Kind of a weird description, bleeding edge. Maybe the only thing that's gonna bleed is your brain if you run into problems. So anyway, you can click on this. Obviously, I have already done this, but I'm just gonna go through it with you. So like I would click this, click download, and then boom, a download is gonna start. Now this might take a few minutes. It looks like down here, it's telling me that I have four minutes to download and I have pretty fast internet. So expect that this download is gonna take a little bit of time. So I've canceled my download, but obviously you're gonna to wanna to let yours finish, but I've already downloaded it. So once it's downloaded, you're gonna have a file inside of your downloads. It looks like this, Android Studio, you know, IDE, and then some date and then your environment. So click on that, go to extract all, and you're gonna to wanna to extract this to, well, it really doesn't matter. It's just gonna be somewhere in your computer. I'm gonna put it on my C drive. So where I put mine was inside of program files. And you can see that I created a brand new folder Folder called Android Dash Studio Canary 4.2. So if you want to create a new folder, you can do the same thing as me. Go inside of here and then boom, there you go. Those are all of the files. So you can uh, you can extract to there just like I did. Once that's done, you can open up that folder. So I'm assuming that you have done that. Now I'm going to open up mine. So go to program files, Android Studio Canary 4.2. Now, because this has been installed somewhere where your computer doesn't know how to find it, like if you go to your, like the Windows search and you type in Android Studio, it's not gonna know where to find the Canary build. So you might wanna create a shortcut. That's what I did. So go into bin and go into uh, Studio 6.4. This is the launcher for the application. Right click on this, go to create shortcut. Boom, there you go, there's the shortcut. Now I'm gonna press Control X on that shortcut. And what I like to do is I built a folder inside of my C directory called shortcuts. And inside of shortcuts, you can see a couple of you know shortcuts and then there's that Studio 6.4 one. So you would just paste into there. You can see that I already have it. So I'll just click you know replace in this destination. And uh, there's the shortcut that you're gonna to use to open up Android Studio Canary. So if I double click on this, that will then launch Android Studio Canary. Now, I'm not like a Windows guy. I'm not a Mac guy. I don't uh, I don't know if there's a way you can like press the Windows key and then search for Android Studio Canary. For me, I, it doesn't come up and I didn't really look into it any further than that. If you know a way that it would, you could make it come up by going down into the little search, definitely do that. But if it doesn't, just create a shortcut like I did, makes it much easier to launch the application. Otherwise, you know, I always press the Windows key, search Android Studio, that's how I always open it. But like I said, if you can't do that, creating a shortcut is probably your best bet. Now, when it launches, it launches the exact same way as regular Android Studio. You can just see that it has the version 4.2 Canary over here, so I know I have the correct one. And at this point, we're gonna create a new project. So click on create a new project, grab the empty activity option, go to next. And I suggest you calling this something other than MVVM recipe app, because that's what I call it in the source code. And we're gonna be uh, checking out my code from version control so that you can be doing some kind of compare and contrast as we go through the course. So I suggest calling this something else, you know, it doesn't matter, recipe app, it doesn't matter, call it anything uh, and then just open it up. And I'm going to open up my project, but you can open up uh, open up yours, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna click cancel, but you wanna go through that, I'm gonna open up my MVVM recipe app. Now, of course, the first thing that you want to do when you open up this new project that you've just created, is you wanna make sure that the all of the imports and the dependencies and the SDK tools are all the same as what I have. So if you didn't see what I did there, go up to file, go up to settings, and go into, here I'll minimize all this for you, go into appearance and behavior, go into system settings, and go down to Android SDK. So make sure that you have, um, I will. I think we're gonna be using API 30 in this, so make sure you have that installed. Also SDK tools, make sure you have the exact same SDK tools as me. So go through this list. The only ones that I don't have installed is Android S SDK command line tools, Android Auto, Android Auto, Android Emulator, Hypervisor Driver for AMD Pro 
processors. I have no idea what that does. And the Google web driver. Everything else I have installed. So if you want to not run into any problems as you go through this Jetpack Compose course, this beginner MVVM course, make sure to install everything that I have. Okay, so once you have all that stuff installed, the next thing I wanna talk about is Gradle properties. So if you open up this file here named gradle.properties, for some reason, I don't know why, but this org, dot gradle dot jvm args setting for android studio this this changes the amount of resources that your daemon process can use i don't really know specifically how it works but i know it's something to do with daemon uh, I, again i don't really know for some reason if i leave this uncommented and i try to change this configuration no matter what project i open it does not work my android studio completely breaks and it doesn't work i didn't really look much more into it other than it doesn't work uh, I always just uncomment it and I leave it un uncommented always and Android Studio works totally fine. So just letting you know, maybe yours is going to work. Maybe yours is not. I don't know. I never looked into it, but I, I just wanted to let you guys know that I always comment this out and that's how I run all my Android projects. So just kind of pointing that out. All right, so now let's quickly go into the build.gradle project file and just quickly kind of go through what comes when you create a new project. So this might look a little bit different for you because you just created a brand new project. The only difference here is that I've defined constants as the versions and then passed them as variables. Otherwise, you should have almost exactly the same dependencies as me here, other than you're gonna have a couple of testing dependencies down at the bottom, one probably for JUnit 4, one for instrumentation tests. You can delete those dependencies because in this MVVM Jetpack Compose course, we're not gonna be doing any testing, so you can delete those. If you just have exactly what I have right here, that is totally fine. And if you wanna compare your code with mine, you can just go to Git, there'll be a link down below. Also in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to check out the sample project from version control so you can very easily switch between branches and all that stuff. So just kind of notice those dependencies and also notice that up here I have no, if you go to the, uh, the project view, notice that I have no Android test or test folder. So for you, if you just create a new project, you're gonna have like a, right here, there'll be an Android test directory. It'll say like Android test. It'll look like that right here. And you'll also have a test directory. So it'll look like that. You can just delete these because again, we're not, be, we're not gonna be doing any testing. You can delete Android test. You can delete test. We are not going to be doing any testing. So just need that main package directory. That's all you're gonna need for this course. So now the last thing that I wanna do is just run the project. So I'm just gonna press the play button up here. You know, we have a single activity. There's really nothing much going on here. I'm actually not even inflating the layout. So I don't even know what's gonna happen if it's gonna run or not. So uh, just run the app, make sure it's okay. And then we're gonna move on to the next video. So there's the app running. We know that the Canary Android Studio is working properly. We can see that there's no errors. It's not crashing, that's great. And so now in the next video, we're gonna look at setting up Jetpack Compose and inflating our first kind of composables and just talking a little bit about how to get started with Jetpack Compose.